One of the biggest differences between a good video and a bad video is the color grade. Good color grade can save a bad shot, but bad color grade can also ruin a good shot. And sometimes you want to add some extra flavor to your shot, cause the image looks so clean and digital. And here comes the sponsor of this video, which is Dehancer. Dehancer makes film emulation plugins for editing softwares, which lets you add some nostalgic retro vibes to your videos. They gave me this plugin to make a review about it, but this is my honest opinion. I will not say anything that does not match with my thoughts. The installation is very easy, just a few clicks. I use the Mac version, but there is a Windows version too, which is exactly the same as the Mac one. After the installation, you can find the plugin inside of the effects tab. I show a quick demonstration how DaVinci color grading works, so if you know it, you can go to the next chapter. As you know, in DaVinci, we use nodes instead of layers, but the functionality is kind the same. Here are our footage, you can see the different scenes. If you click to a scene, you can see the grading which applies to the scene. And here is the color grading workspace where the magic happens. The left is the input, which is our original footage, and the right is the output, which is the graded one. Between the two, we make adjustments on our footage. The path is left to right. If you do something in the beginning, it will affect the rest of the notes. Now you know the basic of the notes. Let's create a few notes with Alt plus S in Windows or Option plus S in Mac. Name the last one to Dehancer and open the effects window. You can find Dehancer of the bottom of the page and drag and drop it to the node. I recommend to use Dehancer around the last nodes, cause if you want to adjust something, we would like to do it before we process with Dehancer. After we applied, you can see the plugin itself. Input. Here we can correct the image. If you're using higher-end cameras, in short, they have picture profiles built in, which basically a compression, so you will get a flat image. And afterwards, you can correct the image. And there is the question, why do you need this step? You can shoot normally without picture profiles and you will get good footage, right? The answer is yes and no. The meaning of the picture profiles is that your camera will get a much better dynamic range. It will be more information in the dark and more information in the highlights too. And also you can color grade it better. And here's the source panel. I try to summarize what is Direct 709 here as simply as possible. First you have that flat image which recorded with a picture profile, like S-Log. It's a popular one. You can see this looks very bad, so you have to correct it. You can do it manually, but it's time consuming and there are better and quicker options for this. You can transform your log footage into a color space where your footage looks normal. And this color space is the Rec. 709. It automatically corrects your image, you don't have to do it manually. So you said here that your input footage is already corrected or not. If you have footage which looks normal, you can leave it in Rec. 709. It means the answer will not do anything with the color space. But if your footage is in log or other picture profile, so it looks flat, you can normalize here. So I set my camera settings here and the answer will correct the image. Click to choose camera, select vendor and you can set your camera type. Mine is Sony, so I set it to A7S3. And the format is S-Log3, s 3 Cine. ISO 640. You can see it looks so much better now. You can set other things here, like exposure, temperature or tint. And different is basically the chromatic aberration. So you can transform your log footage to a Rec. 709 color space and it looks normal now. I reset the settings back, because you can do it separately in DaVinci 2, so if you have a purchase correction LUT, like Phantom LUT or free Sony correction LUT, you can apply it before the Dehancer node and it transforms your image to Rec. 709 and it looks normal again. Or you can use DaVinci's built-in color space transform effect, which works kinda same like Dehancer's tool. Choose your camera settings and it will do the work for you. But now I will use my purchase LUTs here. Go back and because I've already corrected the image, I leave the source on Rec. 709. Film Developer Basically, there you can normalize and customize the image and it makes more flexible for the further processing. I'm playing with the settings here. Film. Under the film menu you can select from a lot of popular analog film profiles. My favorites are Fujicolor Pro 400H or Kodak Gold 200, 
but there is the Kodak Aerocolor 4 125 or the Kodak Ectochrome E100. These are very great. You can see here the push or pull EV slider, which emulates that, that you overexposed or underexposed the image. But keep in mind, it's film, not digital sensor. So if you push or pull, it can change the color, the temperature and the tint or the contrast. It's not the typical exposure values. You can enable or disable it if you don't want to use it. Sometimes I just want to use my LUTs with dehancers other effects like green, halation or bloom. Then I turn it off. But here the Kodak Aerocolor 4 125 is good for me. Film compression. It's a very useful tool. Usually on film, the highlights are clipping much later than digital camera. So this tool compresses down the highlights. You can see the compression here. And you can adjust the compression values here. So if you want a little bit more unified image, use this effect. Expand. You can set here the black and the white point, which means you can control the contrast with the brightness of the blacks and whites. So if you pull down the black point, it will leave the shadows. Print. Film emulation is consists of two parts. First, when you select the film profiles like Kodak Gold 200, it's the emulation of the negative. And the second part is the printing, when you print your image to a real paper. You can choose from film prints. It looks different, but here linear is good for me. You can make some adjustments here, like add some exposure, contrast, or color density, or saturation. Color head. It adds some color to the picture and you can adjust the added color settings. Now I think I leave it as it was. If you want, you can play with it. Film grain. Film grain is a very important effect in film emulation. Here you will get colored grain, which is more realistic and very unique overall. You can adjust the grain in specific exposure values. So if it's too strong in the skin tones, you can lower it. It's very good because it gives you more flexibility. You can adjust the settings if you want to, but there are good presets for these. The film grain can blend your picture together, because it connects the different parts with texture, and it looks better in my opinion. Halation. This is another very important effect in film emulation. Halation basically a reddish outline in the high contrast areas, like edges. You can turn on or off this effect with this checkbox. And if you want to see only the effect, you can see it with this mask mode. Now it shows only the halation. You can do it in DaVinci Resolve because it has built-in halation effect, but I like the enhancer halation more because it also has presets for halation. So you don't have to worry about that you overdo the effect. It looks good instantly. This effect brings this retro feeling to me. I like it. Bloom. This is my favorite effect in film emulation. Bloom is basically a soft light spread around the highlights. This effect is more visible at night time, when you have some light in the background. You can see it spread around the lights. The light usually only visible where the light comes from and where it hits something, like a wall or a subject. But you can't see it between those two, so you can't see in the air. Usually on films, they use hazer machines to make texture in the air too, because the light can hit the particles in the air and then you can see the path of the light which looks more cinematic. So the light spread around the lights can simulate it at a certain level. The black mist filters do the same job, softens the image and spread the lights in the highlights. But here you can turn it on and off. Usually digital images are too sharp and with this you can soften the picture. There are presets too, but if you need, you can customize it. The levels where the effect applies or the spread of the light and a lot more. You can turn on or off this effect with this checkbox. And here you can see only where the effect applies. Film damage. In older films you can see some film damage like scratches or dust. If you enable, it simulates this effect. There are presets for this too. There if you pick for example an 8mm profile, the scratches became more visible and bigger. Film breath. Film is basically an effect, which usually seen when the movie being shown. You can see that little flickering when the film rolling. Gate wave. Usually you can see it on old films. The film strip rolling a little bit when the film rolling. It has also presets, which is good. Vignette. It's like the normal vignette effect. 
you can adjust the values like smoothness, shape or impact of the effect. And you can keyframe it if you want to track the vignette, which is very useful because a lot of times the subject is moving. Monitor. With this feature you can check that your picture's exposure is correct or not. There is a false color and clipping indication. If you enable false color, you can see 16 zones of exposure values. Usually the skin tones are in the middle of the scale. I like to check my image with this. Output. In the output panel, you can set the overall strength of the Dehancer plugin on the image. LUT generator. With LUT generator, you can do LUTs from your settings, which is a very great tool. Also, you can turn off the input transformation, so you don't have to do there and do it manually. I prefer making LUTs without the input transformation, because I do the transformation separately. This way you have an input transfer node, which corrects your image from log to rec 7 online, and you have another node, which is the creative look node. And if the creative node is too strong, you can lower the overall strength of the node. Maybe it could be a good feature if we get an impact slider to the film profile separately. Options. In options, you can set the quality from normal to high. It took more hardware, but you will get better results. But if your machine is overloaded, you can pick the fast option. There, you can download newer film presets if it's available. Overall. Pros. In DaVinci, we use multiple nodes if we want to color grade our image. It's not that transparent if you put all your settings to one node. But with Dehancer, you can correct your image even in one node. And you can see the settings in an organized list, which is clear and simple. You can do almost everything inside here, so you don't have to search. And also, the effects has very good presets. So you don't have to do a lot of adjustments to look good. It's just one click and you're done. Cons. A lot of people complaining the price of the Dehancer. And yes, the $500 for the Pro version, it's a little bit expensive. But I think it's a long-term investment. For long term, it's much more usable and less pricey than shooting with real film. You can make very unique retro looks with this tool. The other con is that Dehancer is a hardware heavy tool. I have a spec'd out M1 MacBook Air and it struggles with the playback even with proxy files. So you do the color grid and you turn the Dehancer off if you want to see the footage normally. And in the end, you can turn back. I know there are better MacBooks in the market, maybe with an M2 Pro, Max or Ultra it could go smoothly. But keep in mind you will need a strong hardware. You can find kinda similar tools in DaVinci Resolve like Halation, Glow, Film Grain, Film Damage, which is free, but here you have presets and you can save a lot of time. Because it's almost like one click and you're done. And I find it much better and more realistic than DaVinci tools. This plugin gives a lot of flexibility with ease. And the other big selling point is the film profiles. I think those profiles are very great and every profile is useful. So you can choose that which fits to your taste. This plugin is my favorite now. I've tested in a lot of footage and the results are stunning. I can highly recommend to music videos or documentary films. It adds that extra flavor what I'm looking for for a long time. And that's all for today. If you like film emulation, you can get 10% off of the answer if you use my code. You can find it in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys in the next one. Peace.